Welcome back everybody to part two of the leasing paradox video series. Now I'm going to keep the same example that we did in the part one video for this video as well. We're just going to be adding on to it and let's do a little review quickly of what we concluded in part one. Basically what we did was we found the NPV of this transaction from both the leasee's point of view and the leaser's point of view. And from the leasee's point of view, we got a positive MPV, but from the leaser's point of view, it was a negative MPV. And we concluded that that's always going to happen with what we know so far. Basically, the MPV to the leasee is going to be negative MPV to the leaser. So it's going to be one of these two scenarios. And basically, this is a win-lose situation, so it's a paradox. And what we have to do now is we have to find ways to resolve this paradox where both sides can be potentially winning. So how can we do that? Well, since we concluded that this is always going to happen, NPV to lease is going to be negative NPV to the leaseor. Notice how if the MPV to the leasee is going to be zero, that means the MPV to the leaseor is going to be zero as well. So that's one potential solution, perhaps not the best solution, because both sides aren't really winning. However, none of the sides are going to be losing either. They're both just going to be sort of indifferent. So this is a potential solution. Or you know what? Let's call it solution one to this leasing paradox. So instead of having a winner and a loser, we're going to have a transaction where both parties don't win or lose. They're just sort of both indifferent. And that's going to happen when both of their MPVs are going to equal zero. So to go over that first solution, what we're going to do is we're going to add on a question to this scenario. And it's going to be part C. Remember part A and part B we did in the first video. So part C, what lease payment will make both parties, both the leasor and the leasee, indifferent? Right, because as we concluded in part A and part B, this lease payment of 550,000 is definitely not going to work out. It will work out for the leasee, they have a positive MPV, but the leasor is going to have a negative MPV. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a new lease payment that will make both parties indifferent. And as we mentioned, the way that both the leasee and the leaser will be indifferent is if the MPV to the leasee and the MPV to the leaser are both going to equal zero. So how are we going to do this? Well, we know that the MPV to the leasee is also what? It's also the net advantage to leasing, the formula that we went over. So basically, we have to find the lease payment that's going to make that formula, the net advantage to leasing, equal zero. So the net advantage to leasing formula is this, written out over here. But notice now, because we're solving for a lease payment, we're not going to be able to make an input for this portion of the formula. We're actually going to be solving for this portion. So instead of the present value of after-tax lease payments, let's put a variable x here for now. And then as we mentioned, this whole formula, we have to solve for those lease payments that are going to make the net advantage to leasing this whole formula equal to zero. However, everything else in the formula is going to stay the same. So the machine still costs 2,900,000 x we are solving for the present value of the cca tax shield is still going to stay at 848991.01 and then the present value of the salvage is still going to be zero because remember the machine is valueless so we can just forget about this portion for the net advantage to leasing for this specific question 
So notice how now we have an equation with one variable to solve for, this x here. So what we can do is we can bring this x, which has a negative in front, we can bring it over to the left side. So it would become positive x. And then on the right side, we would still have 2.9 million minus that CCA tax shield 848991.01. And then when we net out that right side, we would get X equaling $2,051,008.99. But this X that we saw for here, what does that represent? Well, if you remember, we inputted that X in the net advantage uh, to leasing formula, and it represented the present value of the after-tax lease payments. Okay, so what is the question asking us? They're asking us what lease payment will make both parties indifferent. So when they're asking for the lease payment, they're asking for the lease payment per year. And this here, this figure that we solve for, represents the present value of all of the after-tax lease payments. So basically, this is the present value of an annuity. And we have to solve for what's each payment going to be per year, right? So what we can do is we can input some variables in the financial calculator. So we could input this for the present value of the annuities. So this would be 2,051,008.99. Okay, future value is gonna be zero. There's no other cash flows. What's the I gonna be? Well, the I is still the after-tax cost of debt. And if you remember, after tax cost of debt from the first video, we took the 9%, multiplied it by 1 minus 0.35, and we ended up getting 5.85. Now, this is the present value of the after tax lease payments. How many lease payments are there going to be? Well, we said we're going to be leasing this machine for seven years, so the N is going to be seven. And now we can solve for what that PMT is going to be. That's going to give us the lease payment per year, where if we present value all of those lease, payment, uh, those lease payments, we end up getting this present value that we solve for when we made the net advantage to leasing equal to zero. Now again, we assume that these lease payments are being made at the end of each period. Right? It doesn't specify anything about the lease payments being at the beginning. If it did specify that they're at the beginning of each year, then your calculator has to be in BGN mode. But it didn't specify that. Calculator is still in N mode when you're solving for that lease payment per year. So when we solve for that PMT in the financial calculator, we end up getting this amount here. So that is the lease payment per year, $365,451.08. Now, are we done? Well, not fully. Because if you remember, this PV that we saw for initially, this figure that we got, was the present value of the after-tax lease payments. And whenever a leasing question is given, they always state the lease payments on a before tax basis. So because this was the present value of the after tax lease payments, this PMT that we solve for is an after tax lease payments on an after tax basis. But whenever they're asking for a lease payment, unless they ask for the after-tax lease payment, which usually they won't, whenever they just ask for a general lease payment that will make both parties indifferent, they're asking you for the before-tax lease payment. Basically the same basis that they present lease payments to you in questions.
So what we have to do is we have to take this after-tax lease payment and put it in before-tax terms. And how do we do that? Well, we know how to relate a before-tax, I'm going to label that as BT, before-tax payment. What we do is we multiply it by 1 minus T to get the after-tax payment. Right? Well, in this case, we know the after tax payment is what we just saw for this 365. I'm going to erase this here just to give myself some more room. 365.451.08. This bracket, 1 minus t, in this case is going to be what? 1 minus 0.35, which is 0.65. And then this before tax payment, this is what we are solving for. So I am going to actually write it out before tax lease payment. So to solve for this bracket here, what we have to do is we have to divide both sides by 0.65, right? To pretty much get rid of this 0.65 on the left side. And now we will get our lease payment. And this is our before tax lease payment. Remember, a general lease payment, whenever they're asking for a lease payment, just generally, they're asking for the before tax lease payment. And to get that, we just basically take the after tax lease payment, which we got in our financial calculator, and divide it by 0.65, 1 minus the tax rate. And when you solve that in your calculator, you end up getting $562,232.43. So that there is the answer to this question, part C. That is the lease payment that will make both parties indifferent. So a couple of things to uh, summarize. Part C, what lease payment will make both parties indifferent? Remember, on a before tax basis. So there are a couple of steps to take. First, you have to solve for that present value of after tax lease payments and the net advantage to leasing when you make it equal to zero. Then you take that figure and then solve for the annuity payment. This, however, is going to be on an after tax basis. So you got to take that and put it on a before tax basis and you do that by dividing it by 1 minus t and you get that figure. So what does this mean? This means that if the lease payment is this amount, the NPV to the leasee is going to be zero and the NPV to the leasor is going to be zero. So both parties will be indifferent. So if we rewrote this question but instead of 550,000 we had this figure as the lease payment, and we solve for the net advantage to leasing, we would get zero, right? So both parties, when the net advantage to leasing is equal to zero, it means both the leasee and the leasor are indifferent to the transaction. So let's make a quick visual summary of what we have discussed so far. So in part one of this video series on leasing paradox, we mentioned that or we observe, we concluded that whenever the leasee has a positive MPV, the leasor is going to have a negative MPV. Or vice versa, when the leasee is going to have a negative MPV, the leasor is going to have a positive MPV, so it's going to be a win-lose type of situation, which kind of sucks. So we called that the leasing paradox, both of these two scenarios here. And what we did in this video, in part two, is we proposed a certain solution. Not the best solution. It's basically when the MPV of both the leasee and the leasor is going to equal zero. So it means they're both going to be indifferent to the transaction. So they're not really both winning, but they're not really losing either. Kind of a shitty solution, but it's better than this here, where one is winning and the other is losing. In this one, they are both indifferent. And for that to happen, for both of them to be indifferent, the condition for that to happen in this question 
we calculated just now in this video in part C that the lease payment has to equal 562.232.43 in order for both MPVs to be zero, in order for the net advantage to leasing to be zero. Then both parties will be indifferent to the transaction. Now, what about these two conditions or these two scenarios? Can we add conditions for this specific question? Well, if this lease payment of $562,232.43 makes both parties indifferent, what will happen if the lease payment is greater than this amount? Who's going to be winning and who's going to be losing? Well, if you think about it, the higher the lease payment, the better it is for the leaseor. They want higher lease payments while leasees want lower lease payments because the leaseor is receiving the lease payments, the leasee is paying them out. So when the lease payment is greater than this amount, then this scenario is going to happen. The leasee is going to lose and the leaseor is going to win. They're going to have a positive MPV. So we can add a condition to this second scenario that it happens when the lease payment is greater than 562.232.43. And you can actually test it out if you want. You can take a lease payment that's greater, so let's say 600,000, solve for the net advantage to leasing, which is the MPV to the leasee, and you'll get a negative number. And then vice versa, what happens if the lease payment is less than this amount? Well, the lower the lease payment, the leasee is better off and the leaseor is worse off because the leasee has to pay less and the leaseor is getting less. So this scenario happens, the leasee has a positive MPV, the leaseor has a negative MPV. When the lease payment is less, than 562.232.43. And we actually saw this scenario, this first scenario, happen with this specific condition when we initially got the question. Because when we initially got the question, the lease payment that we got was 550,000. That's the lease payment we were working with. And notice that 550,000 is less than this amount. And when we solve part A and part B, in the first video, we noticed that the leasee had a positive MPV and the leasor had a negative MPV. So that's just an example of how this scenario happened with this specific condition, with this lease payment that we were given. So it's sort of nice. We now have specific conditions for this scenario for all three of these cases. Now the real question from all of this is, is there a way for both the leasee and the leaser to win, for both of them to have a positive MPV. And fortunately, there is a way, and it's going to be the best solution out of all of these. It's going to be in part three, and you can find the link to that video right over here. If you don't fully feel confident yet, then I would probably rewatch, whether only rewatching part two or rewatching part one and two before moving on to part three.